Are you confident? <laughs> Are you sure? I recently asked this question to a group of well-educated professional women. Do you know how they responded? <laughs> this is not confidence. This is confidence. Why weren't these accomplished women confident? It, it's not an intelligence problem. It's not a personality trait problem. It's a memory problem. When we lack confidence, it's because we are uncertain that we will succeed. Memory pulls us out of confusion and angst and uncertainty and into confidence. Think about the last time you confidently took on a situation. How do you know you were confident? Because you have evidence. You have a memory. Each memory you have of being confident serves as a data point, as evidence of your confidence. The more memories you make of being confident, the more data you have, and the easier it'll be to be confident in the future. This is data-driven confidence. Memory relies upon your hippocampus, a small seahorse-shaped structure in your brain. Take your finger, now poke it in your ear, now, now just keep going until you hit the center of your brain. That is where your hippocampus lives. And there are two key memory processes that will help you build powerful memories and grow your confidence, encoding and retrieval. Encoding is simply getting information into your memory, and retrieval is pulling it out when and where you need it. And research shows there are three key techniques that you can use to build these powerful memories and boost your confidence. Are you ready for technique number one? Yes. Pay attention. No, really, pay attention. That's technique number one. Raise your hand if you've ever lost your keys. Raise your hand if you've ever lost your car. Raise your hand if you've ever lost your mind. Losing your keys and your car will make you feel like you've lost your mind. In these situations, attention is the culprit. The key is that we have to stop and anchor the moment by making a memory. I have a confession to make. I am a Walt Disney World subject matter expert. <laughs> On my very first trip to Walt Disney World, I committed the cardinal sin of not paying attention to where I parked. <laughs> and I lost my car. The Magic Kingdom has 12,000 parking spaces and 12,000 lost cars at the end of every day. I asked Grumpy if he knew where I was parked, <laughs> but he just frowned and grunted at me. That's my husband. Children are not the only people who suffer meltdowns at Walt Disney World. <laughs> two hours and 2,000 Fitbit steps later, I had no memory of where I was parked and no confidence of finding my car. I was so upset about this situation that I vowed to do whatever was possible to never reenact this not-so-magical experience. I was so committed to building a better memory and becoming confident about where I parked that I convinced my husband that we had to return to Walt Disney World at least five or six times, uh, for, for science, of course. <laughs> the next time we returned to Walt Disney World, instead of bolting out of the car and racing toward the entrance like a crazed five-year-old, 
I stopped and paid attention to where I was parked. I anchored the moment and made a memory. On that fine Disney day, I was going to have better success. And I moved on by using technique number two, attach emotion to what you want to remember. On that magical day, we were parked in space 303 of the Cruella de Vil parking space area. <laughs> and I just imagine evil Cruella de Vil and how excited she would be about three times as many Dalmatian puppies. And then I employed technique number three, notice the details. On that Disney day, I noticed that we were parked by the second row of trees, under a lamp and across from the tram parking spot. I noticed that the car next to us, a green sedan, had a bumper sticker that read, don't tail me. I stopped, employed these three techniques. I paid attention, attached emotion, and noticed the details, and made a memory. At the end of that day, I had a memory of where I was parked, and I confidently found my car. <laughs> Building powerful memories is not just important for finding your car, but is also really critical to big things in life. When I was a graduate student, we were required to present our research to a group of imposing professors every few weeks. Every time we presented our research, they dropped us and tore us down and ripped us apart and then would slowly build us back up again. And this happened dozens of times. They would rip us apart and build us back up again. It was terrifying going into that room every time knowing that we were just going to be ripped to shreds and criticized. I could not have asked for a better confidence building experience. Because eventually I knew that I could go in and do it. Because I had memories of presenting my research in the past. I had memories of surviving those meetings. I knew that I was going to come through it because I had come through it before. And eventually, I grew to be able to confidently stand up my work and enjoy the sensation of actually being confident. Memory shows us that we were confident in the past, we can be confident today, and we will be confident in the future. Put it into practice. Pay attention. Attach emotion. Notice the details. Stand up. I'm going to ask you this question again. Are you confident? Yes. Are you confident? Yes. yes. Remember this moment. Yes. 